welcome to Theme Park Worldwide, where tonight we're here at the Alton Towers Resort to check out one of their VIP experiences. So this evening we are going to be walking up the lift hill of Oblivion. This was priced at £80 per person. It includes the lift hill walk, a single use fast track for Oblivion and express car parking. Now I've got to say, I'm really pleased that Alton Towers have brought back these exclusive experiences. We've not done them for many years, uh, but they used to. And you know what? I think it's a real good step forward that they're offering something a little bit extra. There's a lot of die-hard enthusiasts out there, such as ourselves. The walking up lift hills and coaster climbs, all that kind of stuff, uh, really gets excited, doesn't it? I am super excited to do this because I've never done this before, so I just can't wait. Now, of course, we have a little look at Oblivion from off-ride here. She has some facts about it, and then we're going to make our way and get kitted up for this walk up Oblivion tonight. It's going to be great. Now Oblivion opened here in Exeter at Alton Towers back in 1998, manufactured by Swiss company Bollinger and Mabillard. It was the first dive coaster. In fact, marketed as the world's first vertical drop roller coaster. We all know it's not quite vertical, it's 87.5 degrees, but you know what, it's close enough. And this ride, when it opened all them years ago, um, really put Alton Towers um, on the map once again after opening Nemesis just four years prior. They then worked with B&M again on opening Oblivion just here. And what a fantastic ride it really is. There's just something really special about this ride as well, especially when you're heading around the top there towards this huge drop that's actually 180 foot tall. You wouldn't think it from looking down here, especially with the rest of the structure being just 65 feet above ground. But look at that, it's the sheer power of this coaster. And of course tonight we're going to get to enjoy it from a different angle, a different perspective. I cannot wait to see the views from the top, it's going to be fantastic. Now when we bought this experience we had a good read through all the terms and conditions um, just to make sure we were going to be able to take photos and film the experience and of course share it with you all. However, unfortunately, I actually had a phone call yesterday, didn't I Charlotte? Yeah, so unfortunately we can't take any photos and no videos. I think that's very naughty that it wasn't in terms and conditions before we bought this experience. We're really excited to do it and um, we're going to share a bit of a review and we'll take photos of what we can. The, uh, they have said that the members of staff are going to have a GoPro on them um, to take at least one photo of us at the top, so we'll share that in the video. Uh, but I'm hoping, to be honest, um, yeah, that changes when we get up there and they're going to allow us to take some photos and videos ourselves. I think when you're paying um, £80 for a VIP experience, um, like a track walk or anything like this, to not be able to take your own photos and videos, uh, I think is a real shame, especially the ride obviously isn't going to be operating. It's uh, a real shame, yeah, because we're looking forward to doing it and have been for some time. Uh, we booked it when they were on sale, like what, about six weeks ago, something like that. Uh, to get a phone call the day before the experience is quite disappointing. So we're looking forward to doing it. Uh, it's going to be great. But yeah, it's just a shame we're not going to be able to take you along as far as we know now. But even on the terms and conditions still to this day, it doesn't mention that. I think it's really disappointing. Yeah, so I just wanted to get that in there if you are planning on booking it. As it stands at the moment, um, you can't take anything up there. Even if they said, you know, um, you can't take your phone, but you can take like a, a GoPro or secure camera. Um, yeah, that is really disappointing because I've been looking forward to this since we booked it. And you got to think of the price as well. Um, you know, we paid £80 per person for this experience. That's £160, a lot of money. And not being able to capture your own memories is quite sad. Just the power of me going into that hole. Incredible. The question is, do you get scared of heights, Charlotte? I'm not scared of heights, to be honest, but this is quite tall. And that's the thing, it, yeah. you know, when you're going up there riding it, you're secured in with your harness, you've got your seat belt, it's a different story when you're walking up here, you know. I'm really looking forward to it. I've actually done this back when I worked here many years ago. Um, so cool. It's been a long time though, so I'm excited. And the big reason of booking the experience was so, so Charlotte can do it as well, you know, with her never working here at the resort, never had the chance to do it. And I'm sure most of you watching this video, unless you've worked here or did a tour in the past when they did them uh, many years ago, haven't had the opportunity to walk up. And yeah, when you look at how steep the lifter is over there, it's going to be quite the climb. I was just hoping we'd be able to take you along for the full experience, really. definitely recommend if you like the VIP experiences doing the ones at Blackpool Pleasure Beach such as the big one because uh, they actually allow you to film and uh, take your own photos and videos throughout the experience as well so Blackpool definitely got the upper hand with that one. We are so pleased that the weather is so nice for this walk tonight. If it was raining 
in, it could have ended up being cancelled, so we've got lovely weather for this. Yeah, that's the thing to bear in mind if you are booking any of these. I'm not too sure, you know, how it is. If it started raining right now, if it would be cancelled or you'd wait for a little bit. Uh, but I do know they can be cancelled at quite short notice. So I'm really pleased that the weather is good for us tonight. Uh, anyway, we're going to get some amazing views from up there. I'm not too sure what we're going to be able to film from this point on, but we will film a review afterwards. There is definitely going to be some sort of photo, hopefully not just one, ideally, um, of us up there. I think about 80 pounds, uh, 160 pounds for the two. Uh, there should be at least more than one photo but I guess we'll find out we'll film a review and I'll try and film or take photos of whatever I can do past this point I'm just not too sure what will be allowed and what's not Right then, so we are back here in the studio after our VIP track walk at the Alton Towers Resort. Now, as you saw in the video, we were excited to get up there and see what it was going to be like. We didn't know what we could film past that point, and uh, well, the answer to that one is nothing at all. It was such a shame. <laughs> I think the issue was we wasn't told until literally the day before. The terms and conditions do not state anything about photography and videoing, and even if you were to look at the terms and conditions, today it still doesn't state that yeah so that was really sad and that put us on a bit of a downer about it anyway um, and then yeah we got to the start of our experience so of course we filmed those clips just there with oblivion running round um, we were meeting at five o'clock we were told to be there about 10 minutes before and we arrived there to the meeting point which is just by the exit to oblivion when you come out of the arcade just there and uh, yeah we were speaking to some friends just there who were also doing the walk and looking forward to it as well granted they were also disappointed that they mm -hmm. couldn't film uh, like we were too uh, but of course yeah you know we're all still looking forward to doing the experience um, the first thing we did notice though was when we kind of stood there uh, it's a VIP experience the whole idea is to kind of make you feel special like you're doing something unique it didn't really have a very friendly welcome did it really there we didn't really get that VIP welcome that I thought for the price that we would paid we would have got I was expecting sort of hi I'm so and so so and so um, this is what you're going to be doing are you excited have you got any questions and we didn't really get any of that. We were just sort of stood at the side and nothing was really said. Yeah, it could have been really awkward. Luckily, the yeah. people we were with we were chatting to and that was really nice. But in terms of the interactions from um, some of the VIP management there, we just didn't really get any yeah. interactions welcoming us to the experience that much. Um, it was just kind of like we just stood there for a few minutes mm -hmm. and not a lot really happened. Um, but then things started to pick up actually because the uh, I think it was a ride manager that came down and also the actual ride host that had been working hard all throughout the day. Um, um, that had stayed on to actually um, do this experience with us on the evening. Uh, and they arrived and uh, introduced themselves, gave them a bit of backstory actually about themselves uh, and also some facts about Oblivion. And uh, they were really nice, weren't they? The ride staff were all so, so nice. Such friendly vibes, which was really nice to see. It was. And that kind of, you know, set us up for mm -hmm. the uh, experience. Obviously, it was the first time that they were uh, doing this. Um, but yeah, they were, you know, giving us some facts and things. They just had a little sheet printed out mm -hmm. and, and giving us a few um, bits. And yeah, they were uh, obviously doing what they were instructed to do. Uh, after a few minutes there, we were then walked up at the ride exit into the station area um, and this is where we were told that we could put any bags phones, cameras, anything like that, um, either in the operator's cabin where they'd be locked away or you could just leave them in the baggage hold. We decided just to put them in the baggage hold. I mean, we trust the people <laughs> around us that uh, our items are safe there. We didn't need them locked in the cabin, but that was an option. Um, and I was expecting at this point to have like maybe a full kind of welcome with the some detailed history about the ride and most importantly, a safety briefing. I mean, we've done this similar thing before at other Merlin parks, down at Thorpe Park, um, Blackpool Pleasure Beach, as we mentioned in the video. Um, and we was expecting that briefing, weren't we? Yeah, we, we didn't actually get a health and <laughs> yeah. safety briefing. Like we said, we've done the ones at Pleasure Beach before. You normally have a video showing you exactly what you're going to be doing, showing you all the health and safety, like if there was an evacuation or a fire alarm. We didn't get any health and safety briefing. Also, I was quite surprised that we didn't have to sign anything as well. I mean, um, you know, normally the, you sign something just to say, like, you're happy that, that you, to do it and the, mm. the T's and C's, that sort of thing. Nothing. Um, medical concerns, anything like that. Uh, but no, nothing was mentioned but I thought still you know maybe that's you know gonna come, gonna come. or you know at some point um, but then it was you know we just kind of stood about in the staging for a few minutes um, and then we were greeted with the equipment to wear now of course um, quite familiar with wearing the Petzl equipment which is used for ride evacuations um, anytime basically anybody needs to get evacuated off the ride or staff going up there doing the checks it's basically the equipment that you wear to get checked on and the equipment was presented to us in a bag and it was actually clear that the equipment hadn't been 
been worn or checked before because actually it still had the, the tags on, didn't it? Yeah, so they sort of gave us and it had like the tag that was attached with like the branding and stuff like that and they was taken off. So obviously before we'd put them on, these hadn't been checked, otherwise the tags would have been removed. Yeah, so I was quite surprised yeah. actually at that. I thought they would have at least uh, have been, you know, the, the tags would have been taken yeah. off. Um, but no, like we were the first people that were, were putting these harnesses on, these safety harnesses. Uh, so that was quite interesting. Now, we've done this sort of thing before. We're quite familiar with the harnesses. Um, but yeah, I was quite surprised. There was no real assistance at first of, of how to put these harnesses on, was there? We was all sort of stood in the station and we were sort of handed the harnesses and was like you put them on like a coat yeah but then we wasn't actually told like what to do with it so we was all just <laughs> stood there like trying to put our legs through the harnesses we wasn't actually shown there was no sort of leadership in showing what we needed to do like a demonstration yeah basically. that's it, what we needed it needed like one of the members of staff to just be there and show you how to do it or as they do at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Uh, I was speaking about them a lot because I feel like they really Definitely. know what they're doing with their yeah. VIP experiences. They've ran them for many years. I mean, appreciate this was the first one. We booked onto the first one here, but um, you know, yeah, I was definitely expecting it to be a lot more organized than that. But still, we'll come on to that in a moment. Um, so yeah, we, you know, we, we, we put all our kit on. Uh, a couple of the ride staff did come over and, and tweet them in the end and managed to make sure that we're all safe. We did get checked there as well to make sure that all of that was secure. But they're putting the harness is on you know normally takes like 60 seconds uh that whole process went on for about 10 minutes or so you know like we was all getting <laughs> twisted and tangled and i think if there was a full like safety briefing beforehand that wouldn't have happened because it would have been a quick we know sort of how to put it on like even just a video or a personal demonstration yeah. of how to put these harnesses on not just a case of here's your harness and put it on basically. Yeah, so I felt like that could have been done Definitely. a lot better. Uh, after that point, we were all kind of ready to go. Um, we were had to go into the operator's cabin. So this was quite cool, getting to see in the op cabin itself for Oblivion, see the buttons, see where the uh, the tannoy uh, system mm. was and all that, so that was cool. The main reason for going in the operator's cabin was actually to lock off. Now, this is a terminology you might not have heard of, but basically when anyone was doing any work on the ride, say a member of staff was going to collect some articles that had been lost on the ride and were in a ride area um, then you would have to lock off on the ride basically to make sure that no one is going to start that up um, it's all a safety measure so if there was four people in the ride area each of them people would have a padlock um, and it would be locked off to make sure that somebody else can't come along and start off the ride so uh, that was thought about we all had our own individual locks uh, and put them on um, at this point obviously we, we were told um, you know no photos and videos do we did actually offer to take a photo of us in the operator's cabin um, so you can see that photo just here now we've got a few other photos to share that we, we took of us. These were on a chest mounted GoPro by two members of staff. Uh, as you can see from the photo itself, it's not the best quality, but still it is a photo of us there uh, in the operator's cabin. Now, also the, we kind enough, I think it was the ride manager, was kind enough to actually take a few photos of us in the station itself before the experience. And you can see those here. These were actually taken on my phone, as you can tell, much better quality <laughs> than the uh, the GoPro um, that was gonna be coming up with us um, on the walk, really, then. Yeah, so we had all those photos on the train and then it, we were sort of split off into two groups of four and we was taken across to the other side of Oblivion and we both went up different sides of the lift hill. Yeah, so there was four members of staff, one at the front on each side and one at the back on each side. Um, there was a GoPro on each side as well, so they could kind of take photos of us we could take photos of them if that made sense with, with each staff member um, on either side. So the next part of this was actually clipping on for the climb itself. Um, so we made our way out of the station and obviously, you know, we're familiar with doing this sort of thing before, but again, we weren't really shown exactly how to clip on or anything like that. Now, um, the ride staff were lovely. You they, know, were. They, they were really good. They were obviously doing what they've just been told. And you've got to think ride staff, you know, the, the operators, the host, they know a lot about them rides. They know what they're doing. Uh, and of course, they know exactly how to clip on and they do it every day, you know. Um, but for someone who might not be familiar, I think that could have been uh, done a better demonstration. And this isn't a fault of the ride staff. No. I think they should have been briefed on beforehand, you, beforehand uh, on how to, you know, just to show people more because it was kind of like a common sense thing. Mm. Like, 
like, oh, this is how you do it, when ultimately a lot of people booking on to this £80 experience uh, might not know what they're doing with that there. It's like with the big clips that we had to put on the railings. Some of us, we, we just didn't know how to open them, but yeah. we wasn't shown, so we're there like trying to open them. And really, this should have been demonstrated in the station before we even went up on the lift hill. Definitely. So uh, we, we clipped in to the, um, to, to the rope that's attached mm -hmm. to the side of the cable up the lift hill, and then we started up our climb. And uh, of course, we got some great views. It is a steep climb if you are planning on doing it. Um, obviously, we've done quite a few of these over the years now. Um, but yeah, it is quite a steep climb. Bear that in mind. I mean, we've done like the big one at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. You know, the lift hill gradient is kind of like that. With Oblivion, you know, you are climbing up quite steep. There's gaps in the stairs. Um, so bear that in mind if you are doing the experience. You could stop at any point though, um, which I thought was good. You know, the, the staff that were on there with us um, were, were great. I mean, we didn't have loads of interactions with the ones on the other side. Um, but on our side, you know, it, it was really good. The guy at the back, who was mostly taking the photos and the member of staff at the front um, who was giving us some facts uh, and information. Like the staff were just so nice and it was like very friendly, like they was very approachable, which was really good to see. But it took me ages to get up the lift because <laughs> of how hard it was to pull it up. Sometimes it's it's nice to be like shown how easy it is to glide it through. Like obviously we've done the Pleasure Beach ones and they show yeah. you how to glide it through. These were so hard and I just couldn't get the hang of it, but I wasn't really shown like this is how to properly do yeah. it. And I just kept getting caught at every single clip. Yeah, and this all goes back to, it's an £80 per yeah, person VIP experience. You expect top-notch service, don't you really, here? Uh, and I think that's come more from the VIP management Definitely. team you know just haven't kind of relayed things to the staff exactly what to do really with this experience uh, we then continued on the lift hill got some lovely views um, a photo was actually took of us on the lift hill from the gopro on the other side and and here it is so as you can see you know the fact it's a photo was on there it shows that we've done the experience uh, but i think you know the quality of it um, again this isn't the fault of the ride staff uh, I don't think they really knew how to operate a GoPro camera and they've not really been shown that. Not their fault, but again, I think that's kind of some uh, could have been done before. They could have at least shown them more how to use the GoPro to have captured some better footage and also having the opportunity to have a photo just with your party as well. Luckily, everyone we did it with was lovely. You know, we all got on and had a great time, but I think it would have been really special to have just had a photo uh, of, of ourselves as well and for each party that was on there, you know. I can completely agree like this is a really special experience like we said we have paid 80 pounds for this experience and each. to have a, <laughs> each yeah and to have a photo of just your party on like a really good quality camera would have been so good not like a poor quality that yeah. we did have but again this is not the ride staff's fault they have literally been given the gopro the settings yeah. have been set before they <laughs> got the gopro so it's just such a shame we then got to the top of the lift deal then so we walked around um the ride operator he was that was actually right at the front here was giving us lots of information um, obviously you know he was giving us lots of facts I was actually first in the line if that makes sense once he clipped on you are staying in that line for the whole thing so I was first then it was Charlotte then it was two others uh, that were with us on our side uh, now of course he was giving lots of information really good I could hear that really well uh, I don't know about people further back if they would have heard that so maybe they could look at you know him having like a microphone attached or something like that um, again referencing Pleasure Beats they have done things like that before mm -hmm. on their tours um, not so much the climbs but on some of the other tours they've done I think that would have been beneficial uh, we then walked around all the way towards the drop I mean I was closest to the drop uh, because I was first that was hooked on uh, and the good thing is we had lots of time up there for the experience. We did have about, I'd say 30 minutes, possibly a little bit longer than that, just to take in the views, uh, which were stunning. And that's the thing, like the actual climb up, the views uh, were fantastic, weren't they? The views from up the top were fantastic. They was just so nice to see such a vast variety of the park and other areas. Um, it is fantastic how long they actually let you stay up there. I was expecting maybe 10, 15 minutes. There was no rush in bringing us down. The staff were letting us have as much time as we wanted up there which was fantastic and that was ultimately down to the wonderful ride staff yeah. that, that were up there you know we're having a great chat and, and that was lovely uh, and the sun was kind of starting to go down we had a perfect night for it it would have made some amazing photos uh, we had another couple of photos taken I mean I'll put them in just here um, but again ultimately the quality of the photos for the price of the experience mm -hmm. is really poor we would have loved to have just had uh, you know a really nice photo took on one of our phones even if we couldn't you know take our own photos just to have a member of staff be able to have our phone 
and take the photo. The best thing is the actual Petzl gear we were wearing had a pocket in there for a phone. So even if they could have said, keep it zipped up in there, um, but we'll take a photo of you on your phone at the top. Or even they could have just done it in like Thorpe Park do and give you the lanyard, um, you know, to have your phone in, in the pouch, which I believe it's like on Wicker Man, as we're gonna find out when we do that in a few days time. Um, so yeah, I thought, you know, overall with that, um, the, the photos were disappointing. Like, and, and, and that leads me on to like, our overall kind of thoughts of it. We spent the time at the top, we got some facts, we got to take in the views, uh, and then we turned back round and uh, made our way um, back to the bottom. And obviously, you know, we, you could take your time. There was no rush. That's the great thing. There was no kind of rush. There was no pressure. You take as long as you wanted to, um, which, which I thought was really good. Got to the bottom. Um, and then obviously we had the opportunity then to have some more photos in the station, uh, which was great. They sat us all in the train. They took a group photo. Again, it was quite poor quality on the GoPro, but they did take a few photos on people's phones if they did wanted to as well. But uh, that was the experience. Overall, I am very disappointed in, especially with how much we paid. Um, you know, again, I'll say the price, but you know, 80 pounds per person, you expect to feel like a VIP, don't you, with that? Um, they've done these tours in the past, many years ago, they did similar things. They were a lot better organized, I'd say. And now I know this is the first time that they've done these in a while. We booked onto the first one, but overall, I feel like so much more could have been done. I completely agree. Like we came off and we actually got a certificate but it wasn't printed. Yes. It was sent to us via email the next day. Like just to have a printed copy when we came off would have been great. But the fact that we've got it digital and I've got to print it out myself, yeah. it was just so <laughs> disappointing. Like I just feel really disappointed for the price that we've paid. Yeah, I do. Like, you know, it, it's just overall, it's, it's flat is really flat. And to be honest, as soon as we had that phone call the day before from the VIP team, like, you know, mm. I had that phone call and I was told that, right, that's it. Basically the terms and conditions had been updated, I'd imagine, even though they haven't been on the website as of still recording this mm -hmm. video. Uh, and was told that we couldn't film take photos. For me, that was the reason why I booked on the experience, not just for us to see it and, and capture our memories, but to take you all along as well. Uh, and Another disappointing thing in regards to photos and filming is actually you can have a spectator on the ground, but they're not allowed to take any photos or videos either. As we were told, it could ruin the experience for others. Now, um, in my opinion, you know, we're the one that we've paid for this to do it. Uh, it shouldn't be about ruining the experience for others. At the end of the day, um, you know, you should be able to take the photos and videos. Ideally, they should allow a chest mounted GoPro, or if not that far, just the, the chain, uh, the lanyard around the neck with a phone in, like they do on Wicker Man, we believe and also an option just to stop on the lift hill. I can understand if they don't want people getting the phones out whilst they're walking and it's a trip hazard, that sort of thing. Just stop every 10 steps or something and say, right, now's a photo point. Um, you know, I think that would be a much better way of doing it. So overall, I'm disappointed. Would I recommend the experience? As it stands at the moment, definitely yeah. not. I think it's way too overpriced um, at, at that cost. I won't say it again, but uh, you know, that, that cost is definitely overpriced. Uh, I just feel really like, a bit deflated on yeah. it. The actual experience, experience of doing the lift hill climb and the views was incredible. I really enjoyed that. Um, but the service, and it just didn't feel special. Like you're doing something like this, it should feel like, hey, you know, this is it. Or when we come down, like, congratulations. It's, like, here's your it. certificates. And uh, that's sort of what Pleasure Beach do so well. Thorpe in the past, I've not done them for years, but they, you know, used to do that too. It just didn't have that special feel, did it really? No, which is such a shame. It's like we're going back to the, we didn't want to ruin the experience for others. If this was an indoor attraction, yeah. I could completely understand, but we're outside. Yeah. People have seen Oblivion <laughs> before. How this can ruin the experience for others, I really don't understand, but the lack of communication is just so poor how you can sort of say you can't film or take videos when that wasn't in the original terms yeah. and conditions is pretty poor and to get a phone call the day before to tell us that <laughs> it's just so disappointing it is disappointing from the vip team at alton towers yeah and uh, so now i wouldn't recommend wouldn't the experience at the moment well you know that might change in the future if it does i'd like to do it again really so we can take you all along Definitely. if they change them rules because um obviously then you know we've missed out because we weren't allowed to take photos and videos but still it is what it is um, that's our experience, what we got for uh, £160 for two of us. Yeah. The overall thing was about an hour, and uh, yeah, I wish we didn't bother, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we have booked at the same time, we actually booked the Wicker Man track walk. <laughs> Uh, to be honest, I'm sitting here now thinking, I wish we didn't bother oh, doing wow. it. I wanted to, you know, support the part. They're trying something different here. Uh, but ultimately, you know, we filmed these videos to, to give our, our feedback and constructive criticism. And with this one, it really didn't hit the mark. Didn't. With Wicker Man, we had some friends that did that on Tuesday as well.
while I was away booked on for the Thursday. They tend to run these Tuesdays and Thursdays um, in the off-peak season when ride closes earlier. Uh, so there is dates available throughout the year. Um, so yeah, we've booked on the Wicker Man Track Walk. But this one's different, isn't it? Yeah, so you can put your phone into a pouch and have it around your neck and you can take photos as you're walking up. The lift yeah. and down um, but I just don't understand how it can be so different like with the price that we paid for Oblivion Wicker Man's only <laughs> 65 but you're allowed to take photos I just don't understand yeah it doesn't make sense and then it all goes on to I thought it was about ruining the experience for others it, but is it fine on yeah, Wicker Man, so Wicker Man it's fine. I don't know there's been some clear miscommunication the whole thing to me felt very rushed a bit of a cash grab to be honest yeah. from people who are interested in uh, theme parks and roller coasters it kind of felt like yeah we can just charge a lot for this people will pay it and they won't be that bothered and then we'll just let you down yeah, and, and here we are. That's yeah. how we feel. So, a bit disappointed in Alton Towers. Been some good positives at the start of this season. This one, big blow in my opinion. Definitely. I'm disappointed. And, uh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend the experience. Let's uh, try the Wicker Man one. We'll film a video <laughs> for that. And, yeah, with this one, we know we can take some photos and things on the lift hill. Hopefully some videos. Like, I don't know. But we'll I guess see we'll, when we get we'll, we'll find out. But join us for that one. It'll be coming up things in a few days. Things could change last minute. We yeah, don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Join us in a few days here on Theme Park Worldwide. And uh, let's see what happens. But uh, there we go. Thanks for joining us. As always, we'll keep it honest. We'll keep it fair and constructive on this channel. These experiences cost a lot of money. We spent our you know, hard-earned cash on this as well. I don't want you to waste your money on this one. It's not worth it. Let's see what uh, the Wicker Man's one's going to be like. But uh, thanks for joining us here on Theme Park Worldwide. That leaves me one final thing to say. Get, Get out there and keep, keep on riding. Bye-bye.